Hey, Pilot Hobbs here again, this time bringing you the sharpshooter for real. I'm not going to substitute it out for another mech. I'm actually going to show you the sharpshooter this time, all right? Okay, you can pause here for the mech stats and get a good understanding of uh, the stat without me having to bore you. So just, you know, pause, take a look. But, uh, yeah, uh, this is the sharpshooter mech. It's obviously a sniper mech, and I'm going to go over, like, differences between it and the reaper mech. So if you haven't already checked out my reaper video, I really think you do. You really should. But, yeah. Right now, I'm just gonna show you why sniping's a good job, mate. <laughs> Alright, let's get moving. Okay, so your first questions are probably what's the difference between the sharpshooter and the reaper? Well, the reaper's obviously, it's a light mech, it's not a medium mech like the sharpshooter is, and the reaper has a bit more as far as DPS is concerned when it comes to up close. However, the sniper has, I mean, the sharpshooter has a better burst damage and actually has a higher uh, damage output compared to the Reaper but the Reaper is much more mobile and so uh, it can reposition very easily however uh, with the sharpshooter positioning is much more important because you're not going to be able to reposition very easily or escape a dangerous situation like you can with the Reaper but okay now that you understand the difference between the sharpshooter and the Reaper uh, just moving on to the weapons of uh, the sharpshooter so the default weapons are the SA Hawkins as the primary which if you've seen my brawler video, you already know it. It's basically uh, an automatic rifle, high-powered, you know, uh, just a long, kind of mid to long range uh, automatic firepower. And then the Sabo rifle, not the KE Sabo, this is the OG Sabo rifle, the real one. It deals a hell of a lot more damage. It does like over, uh, I don't know, I don't know the exact number, but I think it does like over 100 or a little bit, of, or uh, maybe like 120, something like that. All I know is it's a lot more than the KE Sabo and, uh, but the reload time on this thing is closer to three seconds rather than the KE Sabo's like uh, it takes about one and a half seconds to reload so that's the major difference between the Sabo rifle and the KE Sabo on the Reaper so make sure your shots don't miss when you're using the Sabo rifle on the sharpshooter and uh, also the ability is not uh, the accuracy increase that you got on the Reaper the ability is actually called power shot on the sharpshooter and so what it does is that you basically have one second to be able to land a good Sabo in and it'll deal extra damage. I think the damage boost is about 20% and so yeah it, it deals quite a bit of damage and the and the uh, sorry uh, the cooldown is only about well it's still 40 seconds so make sure you don't miss when you use that and yeah you might think it's not very useful but it's really great if you see someone that's kind of at low health and you really just want to be able to finish them off you can just hit your power shot and uh you can try to finish them off with that Sable Rifle, it's really great for finishing people off. Or if you know you really need to scare somebody away, hit the Power Shot, smack them with a Sable, and uh, you know, it, you, it'll usually scare people away, because taking that much damage in one hit, I don't know, you, but whenever I, it happens to me, freaks me the hell out. In fact, hell, I think still to this day, like the sound of a Sable Rifle hitting my mech out of nowhere still scares the crap out of me. I mean. That's pretty much what the sharpshooter is great for. At long range is just keeping people pinned and uh, giving supporting fire. That's really the whole point of this mech. And so, as you can see me doing right here, uh, I'm doing my best to, you know, as I said with the Reaper, learning how you can stay moving and uh, keep uh, being able to support my team because uh, I don't want to be like too far back or, you know, I'm not going to be doing any good. I want to be up there, kind of, not like I never on the front line. I'd say, if anything, the back line. Uh, so I can actually still help them out with my fire, but you know still be close enough to my team to be able to you know uh, Help them out Just to talk a little bit more about the weapon before uh, the clip switches out. Oh, yeah You can zoom in by hitting middle mouse just in case you didn't already know but pretty much I use the SA Hawkins It's pretty much you use it to soften people up at a range with it And then you can just finish them off with your sable rifle. That's pretty much how I say you use it but in case, in terms of the weapon itself, it's very very simple to use. I mean, it's just it's an automatic rifle basically. You just got to make sure you keep your reticle on your target, and you'll be landing shots. So it's not too hard to use. But yeah, we're gonna switch out the clips here in a little bit. But it's actually gonna be a little bit different this time. I'm not gonna show the alternate weapon first. I'm actually gonna show the prestige weapon first, and here's why. Okay, so here's the prestige weapon unlocked at rank five, which is the Amsar. And if you've seen my Reaper video, you know it's the starting weapon on the uh, Reaper. And the reason why I did this to get it uh, first is kind of to get it out of the way, really, because unfortunately on the sharpshooter, the Amsar is kind of redundant. It's like as far as statistics and everything, if you can you just look on the screen. They're the SA Hawkins and the the Amsar are very, very similar in terms of DPS, their heat output, and all that, and the firing rate. They're very, very similar. In fact, they're just 
too similar. I, I like a couple people like on the forums have kind of wondered why like these are like two separate weapons. I like, got these two weapons are on the same mech, but that's another argument for another time. But as far as the weapon stats themselves, the AMSAR actually does have a slightly higher damage output than the SA Hawkins. However, you gotta deal with the uh, semi-auto only mode of the Hawkins. So unless if you're fine with the whole clicking fest that comes with uh, having using the AMSAR, then yeah, you will get slightly more damage out of the uh, AMSAR than you would with the SA Hawkins, if that's the style of sharpshooter that you like to play. So, just giving you a heads up right now. I mean, I personally, I wouldn't have gotten this weapon, but since I'm doing these tutorials for you guys, I thought I might as well get it, since I love you. Right, now, I'm just going to go over more uh, general tips for using the sharpshooter. So, I got the AMSAR out of the way. But, uh... A flying sharpshooter. Don't. Unless you really know what you're doing, and uh, I'm assuming that by you watching this video that you don't, uh, don't try it because I don't know what people think. They Apparently they think somehow flying does not introduce much more complicated moving dynamics and will somehow help increase their aim. It really doesn't work like that. Flying will just make it more difficult for you to aim your shots and people I see them do it all the time. Like the only time I can see where it would help is when you reach the peak of your flight and you have a nice height advantage. However, when you're that far out in the open and you're flying like that, okay, if you've ever seen any of my past videos, you already know that flying way out in the open and lingering in the air like that, bad idea. It's just the perfect way to get shot because you can't dodge out in there and chances are your uh, aerial speed's gonna be a lot slower than your ground speed, so it really, really does not help in most cases, so. Like, uh, the only time, like, I go aerial inside my sharpshooter is where I need to, like, uh, peek over, like, a piece of cover that they're hiding behind. Like, if it's, like, a little small hill, like, they kind of went down a hill, and I need to just, you know, go up a little bit, try to get them, and then, you know, pop a Sabo in their grill. I can do, I do, I'll do it like that, but, you know, that takes a lot of practice to be able to do something like that. So, you know, when you start out, just try to stay on the ground when you can, and, uh... Yeah, but if you want a height advantage, just uh, go up on a platform. I mean, it's going to be a lot easier because you can still dodge. You actually, like, you have a decent height advantage, and you won't be, like, burning fuel to keep the height advantage either because, you know, even though how I said, like, uh, the sharpshooter is not the best at escaping bad situations, I mean, it's still pretty decent. I mean, you can still get away, and, you know, but you can't do that without fuel, and if you waste all your fuel on flying, well you know, you have no fuel to run, and a sharpshooter does not do very well in close quarters combat. I mean, it's a sniper, for crying out loud, and so, you know, it comes with the, it comes with the territory. I mean, you kind of see me CQCing here, but yeah, that's mainly because I'm fighting AI. Yeah, but in addition to that, it's just like positioning is a very important thing with the sniper, too, because you want to be able to position yourself where you're going to be able to shoot all the enemies and, you know, be able to support your team, but you do not want to be too far from your team in case you need help, uh, yeah, you, you're still close by your team, because, you know, if you get caught, uh, away from your team, you know, you're a sniper, and you're not gonna have too much offensive power, so, you know, it's, it's gonna be easy for the enemy to take you out, so, the snipers best, uh, use close by their team. Oh, yeah, another thing, uh, just like any other mech in the game, if you're standing still, you're kind of dead, because, you know, Hawkins is a really fast-paced game, so if you're gonna be slow, you're... It's not good to be slow when you need to go fast. I mean, you gotta go fast. Even inside of a sharpshooter, I mean... The only time where I justify where you don't want to move too much is when, you know, you're at a long range, and you see, and there's somebody in the distance, and you want to really focus on, uh, just, you know, uh, laying your shots into them. But, you know, that's assuming you're not taking fire. I mean, if you're under fire, like, you know, heavy fire, I mean, someone's just, like, for some reason decides to try to, uh, uh pick at you with a Vulcan from, like, 300 feet away, um or like across the map, don't worry about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like another uh, sniper like seriously trying to take you out. Don't stand still and just let them shoot at you. I mean, move around a little bit just at least to upset their aim. Try to dodge. I mean, yeah, you, you don't want to stand still and just uh, take all that, that take all that lead. I mean, now I know learning to shoot while on the move is kind of tough and you know, it was pretty tough for me to learn, but it's just something you're gonna have to do because, like I said, you know, standing still in this game is just, you're just asking to get a, a tow rocket in your face. And, you know, also learning how to aim while flying is not too bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's a good, actually, never mind. I, let me rephrase that. It is a good idea to learn to aim while flying because when you need to, but don't try to fly too much. Like I said, don't 
try to fly to get a height advantage over your enemy. If anything, just use the flight to remove an enemy's height advantage when you need to. But, you know, just don't try to fly too much in the sharpshooter. But yeah, we're gonna move on to the uh, alternate weapon. Next weapon is the rank 3 alternate weapon and is my personal favorite. Yes, it is the slug rifle. I love this weapon on my uh, both my sniper mechs because of how much damage this damn thing does. If you thought it did a lot of damage on the Reaper, it does way, way more in combination on the sharpshooter. I mean, uh, seriously, uh, I can pretty, I can almost one shot a technician if I use my power shot and fire both a slug and a sabo at the same time. It, it's just, it's ridiculously powerful. If anything, this is basically the longest range loadout of any mech in the game. And, uh, yeah, it just, you can just become a powerhouse from a range with the slug rifle. Just to clarify, the slug rifle doesn't actually do more damage than it does on the Reaper. I just, I said that it does more damage in combination with the Sable rifle, because the Sable rifle does much more damage than the KE Sable on the Reaper. Just, just so we're clear. And again, the reason why I like this weapon a lot more than uh, the uh, S.A. Hawkins or the Amsar on uh, Sharpshooter is because of the burst damage. You already know me, I love me some burst damage because I can fire, I can volley uh, my slug and the sable rifle together and then da dodge right behind cover before that sniper can try to get me. Whereas if I was using the Hawkins or the Amsar, I'd have to like, I could maybe get one sable into them, but then I gotta wait like three seconds before I can do anything again. And if I wanna do anything while I'm waiting for my sable to reload, I gotta like slowly plink away at them with like the, uh, with the Hawkins or the, uh, or the Amsar, and I, I kind of don't like that. It just for me, it's like a sniper should just feels like one shot, just bang, like a whole bunch of power right there. And that's what I like about the slug rifle. Now again, uh, just going to more of the general on the sharpshooter. Now unlike the Reaper, the sharpshooter actually does a lot worse in the uh, side of close range combat. And uh, I see a lot of uh, new guys in their snipers trying to get up close range. No, 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 don't be doing that. Uh, even like when you're trying to chase somebody down, I still maintain a good range on them if I'm trying to chase them. I just go around enough, uh, whereas I can get a good sight line on them. As soon as I can see them, that's when I start shooting at them. I don't ever run up to somebody in my in my uh, sharpshooter. It's just a bad idea. Because uh, even with like the SA Hawkins or the Amsar, I mean, those are decent in close range combat, but they don't fire nearly as uh, fast and they don't output nearly as much damage as like a Vulcan or an SMC or AR, anything like that, so no. And of course the slug rifle is already pretty weak in close range as it is because of how slow it fires, but you know, it, you can kind of play peekaboo uh, with the slug with the slug sniper, you can play peekaboo at long and at close range, however it's kind of tough. Like, you can kind of, see, you kind of see me doing it throughout the whole time you saw me doing the slug rifle. But uh, yeah. also remember that your Sable Rifle's accuracy, while unscoped, is god-awful. You're, you're, you'd be lucky if it landed. Like, uh, pretty much, you have to be like right in somebody's face in order for you to ensure that the Sable Rifle hits unscoped. I mean, it's that bad. You know, you might get lucky and you might be able to get a shot off at like a uh, close mid-range, but unless you're point-blank in their face, that Sable Rifle, that unscoped Sable Rifle, no, you're not gonna no-scope, I'm sorry, but yeah, unless you're right in somebody's face, it's not gonna work, so. On the sharpshooter, as I had mentioned, like in the Reaper video, you might want to learn quick scoping. It definitely works out here with the sharpshooter. Uh, you can fire the uh, slug rifle unscoped without uh, too much of an accuracy penalty, but no, nah, the sable rifle, you really need to scope in to be able to land shots. Like, I'm sure you've seen me throughout the video, like where I've uh, quickly scoped in when people got uh, close to me and I, I scoped in for that Sabo shot because I really want to make sure I land that Sabo because if I miss, hey, it's three seconds, I gotta wait until I load another one. But yeah, but like I said, the sharpshooter is not meant for close range combat. If you're cornered and you don't have any other options, then you can try to fight. But other than that, it's better to run. But yeah, and, then, and also to close up, I'm just gonna go over my items. The items I have are still shield, hologram, repair charge. They're all great. They've all saved my lives a couple times. Well, the hologram is just fun to mess around with people with. And uh, the uh, the internals that I use are the uh, evasive device, the basic uh, deflectors, and the air compressor. Yes, I use the air compressor because actually the slug rifle pretty, works pretty well with an aerial sniper if you're good at it because I can uh, fly up if I need to, uh, line up a shot, 
fire and dodge back behind cover up while I'm in the air. And plus people don't really expect it, but it's not good for like a one-on-one -on -one close up duel. But yeah, that was the sharpshooter mech. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. But next time I'll be going with the Grenadier and this is Hobbs signing off.